I'm am, free I, ring. Okay. am I driving or yeah. am I just going to pull over? Probably might as well drive. Okay. Yeah, but if you guys lose service, you're going to be going. Oh, that's true. Yeah, I'm going to pull, uh, over, yeah, under pull over, tree. over there under that tree. That way I'm not in front of the 7 Eleven. Okay, <laughs> ladies, we are live. Yeah, I lost the place. Hey. Hello, Hello everyone. everyone. Happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. And the moms. Hello. Who are Hello. So, okay. so yeah, under that tree over there. So we're in shade. Yes, ma'am. How about? Okay, so Tracy and Karen are on their way back from a Staunton, Virginia. From Staunton, Virginia, they went yep. to a Bigfoot convention, and they can't wait to share what they learned with everybody. <laughs> And we don't know anything about it. So. Sharon and I are in the dark. Sharon, and that's that's why we food. thought it would be good that you guys could ask us questions too. Okay. So, well, it was an amazing conference because we sat there at the beginning of the morning and we listened to all the speakers until it was what from ten to seven. Yeah, from yeah. ten to seven. So we listened to the individual speakers and each one, it was so funny because you start out very specific about Bigfoot and, the, and like they're Bigfoot researchers. And then it slowly morphed into more paranormal things towards the end. It was fascinating because they presented some really cool ideas towards the end. You had the first speaker was very, um, he's written books, he's researched out, you know, all different places across the United States where Bigfoot's been seen. Um, they have multitudes of account encounters. Yes, yes. I mean, all the people there pretty much have had some type of encounter with either rock throws or sounds in the jungle like they say we're seeing or seeing an actual bigfoot so it slowly progressed though from the very factual well factual information from them to information that brought in another whole dimension as to what this possibly could be and as to where where he is literally is and mm -hmm. we talked a lot about tree knocking sharon oh awesome stuff you know awesome tree knocking oh <laughs> <laughs> I love it, that stuff. it brought in so many cool aspects um one of the things that was confirmed was not confirmed but it, again it was talked about was the theory of frequencies that everything is on a frequency and this one gentleman who had grown up in Colombia, the amazon rainforest in Colombia, talked and he talked about like just basic things of like we need to keep our mind open to what's around us because anything truly is possible. Just because someone else says, no, 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 it doesn't mean it's not possible. And he brought up the whole thing about frequencies that not only do they run, I guess, vertical, but they also run horizontal. So our entire world is like this grid of frequencies, mm -hmm. which is perhaps why you all see glimmers of people that pop in spiritually. Mm -hmm. He's saying that the glimmer is more like the portal or the the grid opening up to mm -hmm. let these people come in. And so it was, it was mind-blowing. That's why I see your dad as a glimmer, because he's yes. popping in to help us. He's, he breaks the frequency long enough to come in. Right. And that's yeah. so fascinating for people if you're just seeing lights. So right. he was saying that. If we're there, a lot of the people are seeing lights with Bigfoot now. And so is that Bigfoot coming in from a different parallel universe or wherever he's coming in from? So does that, does that kind of explain why they've never actually gotten like good photography of him? Mm -hmm. They think because his vibration is so high vibrating. <laughs> Look at my goosebumps. So that it make that it makes the pictures blurry too. and the blurries are the pictures are blurry because of it and the one the Gim rogerson gimlet film that they have of the female bigfoot that they've seen walking that's that's one of the original films from 1967 that they cannot they know it was not reproduced they know it was not fake because they did not have the technology to fake a suit at that point like the one that they like and the movements and everything because they've had that thing's been analyzed one side and down the other so there is no way that they think that that film was actually, you know, forged in any way, shape or form or faked at that point in time. We just didn't have the technology in 1967. And he Great. said where it was located was you couldn't carry a suit in like that, mm -mm. that it would have been way too heavy and they would have never been able to get something like that in there. Because a lot of it is off these cliffs. Now she, now they call her Patty. She was walking across what it looks like a flatland by water. 
But to get to that area, like the two, Rogerson and Gimlet, or it was it Rogerson? No, it's Patterson, and, Patterson Gimlet. and Gimlet. They both came in on horseback. And that's why they think that they were able to do the terrain like that. And if anybody watches Expedition Bigfoot, you'll see this last episode where they actually do go back to the site of where this was filmed and they talk to someone who actually is um, a professional makeup artist, a professional, you know, people that do this for a living to, you know, to build these outfits and stuff. And he said there was no technology at that point in time that could have moved with the with that figure the way that it did. And they've taken it frame by frame by frame to make sure that they could, you know, that they could actually say whether it's been altered. It's never been altered. They've proven that it's not been altered. Wow. So it was amazing to listen to that. But also in Expedition Bigfoot, they've actually come up with the size of the female that they think it was. They actually did this last episode. They said she was like six foot three. But, so, it, but OK, I got a question. Well, hold up. How do we know oh. it was a female? Boobs. Be boobs. Oh. It had a chest plate that it had hung over a little bit more. So that's why they're assuming it was a female. So they call her Patty. And she's not as big as what they are. They took, um, I can't even remember what it was called, but some kind of form of measurement to figure it out. There's only like one little area that's left of the original foliage. Because again, you're talking 55 years ago. Yeah. So there's only like one little spot that they could compare to the new spot to try to get the dimensions of everything. And that's how they gauged her her height but the idea of frequencies came up which was fascinating and the other big idea do you want to tell them no nope, you go right ahead um well was it the Sus the squatch watchers yes i think it squatch was that. watchers from north carolina they are and they have no bones about it they're very religious they are big christian boys the whole nine yards but they and were very funny yes they are very funny but they they brought up a whole issue which was very interesting so we know, do we know what skinwalkers are? Yes. So I want to tell our viewers, because some of our viewers may yeah. not know. Well, that's what I'm saying. Does anybody want to take it? Does anybody want to tell what skinwalkers are? You go right ahead. <laughs> skinwalkers are basically, it's it's an Indian, it, it comes from an Indian background mm -hmm. of shape-shifting, a shape-shifting type of element yep. or figure or something like that. So what right. they have, what they have done is somebody asked, were these giants in the Bible? Yes. Yes, they were. David yeah. and Goliath, that kind of thing. The, there's Wait. plenty of messages in the Bible that refer to the giant people or the bigger yep. people all throughout history. So here's a proposed theory by them, which I was fascinated by. The war with God and the angels took place before they were cast out of heaven. This is, you know, based on the religion. They were cast out of heaven and they were cast down to what we call hell for some people. So a lot of people refer to hell on earth. Like it's just this dimension, it's here. So what's the idea that they, that these giant people aren't those angels that have come down? So Sasquatch being angels. It could be a shape shifting thing because again, you know, there's angels here on earth. You know, they're not the angels that we see in the books with the white wings flapping around protecting right. everybody. Right. But yet we all know there's angels. Right. We all know people have intervened in our lives to keep us where we need to be safe. That's so, an interesting. I mean, that's an interesting, you know, theory. I never exactly even. It. it is honestly, a theory. Honestly, I've never even thought <laughs> about it like that. Like mm -hmm. I, mean, I can see, I can see like them possibly being shape shifting skinwalkers, you know, because skinwalkers can be any shape form mm -hmm. that they want to take. Mm -hmm. Um. So wow, but isn't that fascinating? <laughs> then okay, so if it's a shape shifter that's taking on the Bigfoot oh. persona, is mm -hmm. that like? I mean, where did they get that? You, my mind goes to how do these shapeshifters who are beings individually, how do they know to look like a Bigfoot? Right. Is, there, is, that, is that another, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like another like planetary creature that they're mimic, mimicking here? Could right. be. But think back to all the tribes that have these 
giant hairy people involved in their culture. I mean, they we do. know the natural, the Native Americans, they're, these creatures go back way back and they have relationships with these, these creatures for a better lack of better term. They have relationships with them. So what if they were originally a form of that? Because again, we're just calling it a Bigfoot and we're referring to it as a big hairy animal, but truly is that, we put that name on that creature. Yes. Right. Right. I mean, there's, and there's all kinds of species of monkeys out there that, and the Oran pen, pen dying, you've got the Neanderthal that they think might have had to do with Bigfoot. So why Humanoid. couldn't these shift-shaped, 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 I mean, we've evolved, so why can't other things evolve? Right. You right. know, so true. And true. there are millions and millions of acres out there that have not been explored. You just can't get into the density of these places. And that's why, you know, it was interesting because some people said, Do you think if everybody actually went out and looked, you'd find them? My opinion is no. I still don't think you're going to find no, them. No, I don't think so either. I think because they're in there, they ship, they ship. I dimensions. Just, yeah, I right. just think they're interdimensional. It's, it's too vast out there. I think even if we all went out looking, we'd still be missing property that we hadn't been you on. You couldn't get to so it. Here's a question that. though. Since they're interdimensional, do you feel that they're like when we when someone does cite one, do you feel like they they're like almost <laughs> for lack of a better word, like have a Harry Potter thing, like the cloak of invisibleness? There's the other thing they talked about this weekend that that they really don't have they have a white a clear covering over them like a polar bear kind of that can change change what they look like it would fit in with the camouflage of the of the the background that they're in like the like Harry Potter, Potter thing right yeah, yeah. So it's not like they become invisible, but they just morph in with their morph in with their back area, and yeah. you're not chameleon. Camouflaged. They're like a chameleon, well, right? Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 So, Steve, what did you say? Just like Steve, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Why can't it be right there? You can't see him. <laughs> Steve's saying, "Well, maybe it's just an extinct species that you know." And that's a theory. I don't that's a theory. Know. Well, and we're always. Oh, to this day, we're finding new species of animals we didn't even know were out there. Mm -hmm. Right. I don't know, you know, who, you know, who knows what And the it encounters is. they're having, a lot of people, it's the sound way, it's the sound that's probably the biggest evidence because they can pick that, they're picking that up in many of these places. And the fact that they do have boulders being thrown at them when they get too close to certain areas. Or you know, get they're hit. Yeah. Right. They're, they're, they're protecting their, their own, like, whoops, their own, I guess. So I can see that they, you know, it's a form of communication for them because it right. can be anywhere from a growl to the howls that they put out. And they said in some of the situations, they're real short howls. Like if you hear them real short and quick, it's a form of their communication to the others. And one woman stood up and said she lives on Skyline Drive and she heard they were doing, um, they were doing blasting to put in pipes in her neighborhood. And she heard whooping the whooping one night and she said then you heard it on down the ridge then you heard it on down the ridge from there so it was like they were communicating to each other to let them know there was danger there oh wow you know this so, shit i'm gonna tell you right now it's oh sorry you're not supposed to touch um <laughs> we're on live so this fascinates me and uh -huh. i'm gonna i'm gonna be honest with you it really i didn't put too much thought into it until caring come into my life numerous years ago <laughs> um you know I didn't put too much thought into it if I'm being honest and mm -hmm. I am freaking fascinated over this mm -hmm. and because you know I don't have all the answers but spirit talks to me a lot and mm -hmm. spirit just like you know I've told you guys this before spirit's just like yep. you know it's it's a multitude of things so what you know we're not, we don't even know everything. No, you know? and that's so, what I think is fascinating because oh. again, there's all these theories out there and there, but it leads to like, when we pick up psych, psychic frequencies and things and the telepathy and all of that, that to me plays into this whole outer range of frequencies because everything in our world has a frequency to it. Right. And, and 
also, I'm going to be honest, I never had experience until that night up in the woods <laughs> with Karen when we would bang, knock, it would mm -hmm. knock back. And uh -huh. yep. it was no freaking echo. Uh -huh. No. So that, that means it's intelligent. And if yes. it's intelligent enough to do that, it's a, who knows? I yep. mean, the, the, as humans, we only use, what is it, 10 or 20% of our brain, mm -hmm. of our yep. mental capacity. So mm -hmm. right. you know, this could be, even though it's a monster-ish looking thing or whatever, it could be a very evolved species. You know, right. you say it's not a Neanderthal that took this lane and we went this way. Right. 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 But who's to say if they were the fallen angels at that point in time, they just thought they were another creature on earth. Right. You know, at that point in time, so early in our evolving, you know, or our development as humans, that could have just been what was there. You know what I mean? Well, I mean so they blended right in. We were all supposedly, if we go by the science books, all hairy. Right. So evolved. if you right. go by evolution, that is what it is. Right. And so there's, uh, this is fascinating to me. I'm not going to lie. I never I really, wanted to talk to you guys. <laughs> I you never. Could have gone. You would have loved it. Loved it. Oh, oh I would have had a million <laughs> questions. Yeah. And so for anybody that's wondering, I am doing piggy food if they're watching on the live land. <laughs> I'm doing piggy food. Um, I make up little bags for them. But um, I, I am so, I was so excited. I didn't know you guys were going to this. Mm -hmm. And I was so excited for you guys to have this experience because I have so many questions about this that, because there's a theory that it's a tulpa, you know, uh -huh. it's a theory that uh -huh. it's like the Loch Ness monster where so many Correct. people have put thought into it that they actually manifested mm -hmm. it and created it into an energy. So Correct. I've been reading since that night, Karen, that we had mm -hmm. that experience because <laughs> I mm -hmm. can't wrap my head around it does it make sense i'm, I'm like absolutely and my whole point to all this is it's the paranormal paranormal is not normal things that are outside of our realm outside of our abilities to to grasp it and that's why i'm so fascinated by everything paranormal because again these are things that entertain our thoughts stretch our thoughts you know the frequency levels and uh, tracy why we're sitting there all i could think of is the telepathy angle that you and i had talked about right. you know because again then listening to this man speak and it wasn't just about Bigfoot it was about the paranormal and mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. our world he was saying just keep an open mind because frequencies out there this opens up the whole realm mm -hmm. of things that are possible don't, don't you guys think that you know paranormal in general and spirit in general is having that open mind yes, yes. I, yeah. to experience it you have to have that open mind because if you shut that down, which I've done in the past, uh -huh. I think we've all been there, done that, you know, uh -huh. try to block it out. Right. It doesn't happen as frequently when you uh -huh. do that. But if you're open to it, you're going to have those experiences. And the same thing with Bigfoot. You know, you guys, the three of you are like all on board with Bigfoot. And I'm sitting here going, I've heard so much in the back of my house. Uh -huh. I don't know what's back there. But you guys swear that it's Bigfoot and okay. Fine. But it's funny because you guys talking about this and how they have different um, uh, like frequencies and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And like when they communicate between them, there's been times mm -hmm. I'm sitting out on my back porch and I'm like, what was that noise? And it gives me a feeling. When that noise gives me a feeling of, oh, I better get out of here or something to that effect, mm -hmm. is, is that me picking up on what that message was that came across? Uh -huh. <laughs> See, I think it is, because I think when whenever you're, the vibrations, if you think of it as a grid vibrational frequency, if you think everything here, and that's what was fascinating, that the frequencies can run vertical or horizontal. So now you've got to believe everything in our world is a grid. So does that feed into the matrix theory that we are living in a matrix? Ah, don't. Don't even get me started on that because it's a whole nother topic. <laughs> I know, but just think about the possibilities where if you just think about it, oh my God, that opens up another whole door. You know, it's like, yeah. it's just amazing when you start thinking about 
the possibilities that could happen. But again, it takes, you have to keep an open mind and you have to be able to take things out of the boxes. We've been fed, I'm sorry, and, and this is personal in the way I feel, we've been fed certain ways to think about certain things. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I and just I like saying, agreeing with you, yeah. Yeah, because again, I think, you know, we were brought up a certain way and everything has to be factual. And, and trust me, I'm a logical person. I need to think things through logically. But again, when you really take the boundaries away, what's possible? What's right. possible? Right. Well, <laughs> everything. Exactly. <laughs> everything. And I, and I think for me, we had a lot of speakers and most of the speakers were, and I went to this convention last year and I can tell you it was not this mind provoking. It was good. But this year, <laughs> there was so much more learned. But, and we had a lot of this. The, so what, why do you think that is? I, well, I think because the MCs this year were the people that uh, me and Walker really liked last year. They were MCing it this year. And he said he had just come across this theory not too long before the conference. Yes, because right? somebody asked him, was Bigfoot in the Bible? Or was there these giant things in the Bible? And we all knew Dave, the story of David and Goliath. Yeah. And can trace the book of Enoch was brought up, Sharon. Yes. The book yes. Was wow. brought up. Yep. I'm telling you that whole thing that we went down that rabbit hole with that night. I'm sitting there listening to this and I'm thinking there are no coincidences. There are none. Oh, no, no. Is so many, we're progressing. It, it is. Okay, so. Um, but, but what was funny to me was the one guy that I thought got the most from is not one of these professional researchers that go out in the field. He literally can't. He has a heart problem and can't. He does just sits at his house and does research on it. And he said, that's where he's learning, like the habits of Bigfoot. Justin Decker. He was phenomenal. He, he's just, and it was so funny because he sat behind us most of the time. And you know, Karen and I all the time, oh, I believe, I believe that, you know, like we're talking back and forth and he's listening to everything, everything we're saying. He's saying. And he sat there the entire day and he said, I'm not one of them. I'm one of you. I'm here to hear what everybody has to say. But he investigates the paranormal to begin with because he grew up in the Amazon. He, he, was, he lived there until he was, what, 12, I think he 10 said? Or before, 12. 10 or 12 yeah. before his family yeah. moved to Michigan from there. But they lived with these things. He said, you know, we lived with all these monsters and all these stories. Like, you did not go out at night because of what could eat you. And, and those people that he was around didn't know the English language, mm -hmm. had languages all their own. Mm -hmm. So nobody was communicating with anybody else to but they all had the same image of what, what their something out looked there. like down there. Oh, That's wow. what you can't miss, that you can't overlook is that- It's in all cultures. Yeah, and they can't speak to each other. Mm -hmm. So we're not, like the, the American Indians aren't going to look at us now because we didn't have the same language back then. We saw the same thing, said something, but they're getting the same thing, but we don't know what they're saying because we don't know their language. Right. And I think that's worldwide. Right. And that's what he was saying. We don't know what, yeah, we know what these creatures look like. We've, we've got it written down and that's what he does. He goes and writes all these accounts down, writes the difference. So he's got like a profile of them with the rock throwing and the boulder throwing and the knocking and the, the whoops, the whoops, the communicate. And they do think that that's a type of communication among them. So oh. here's, here's a question. <clears throat> <laughs> Has there ever been a baby Bigfoot? Yes. They call them juveniles or youngsters. They're, they're still big. They're big to uh, like, they're probably my size. <laughs> <laughs> well, then they're cute. <laughs> <laughs> so, but they're out there. They're, they do feel they're in families. They do feel they're out there. I have read accounts of Bigfoot, the mothers carrying babies. I've read accounts and of that. And protecting their young from, that's why they do throw rocks and boulders. So the people that are watching our live, what are your thoughts on this? I mean, what is your thoughts on Bigfoot and where Bigfoot comes from? And, and it's fascinating to me because mm -hmm. I'm a person that if I don't understand something or I don't have all the information about I hyper fixate on it. Mm -hmm. It's my personality. Is mm -hmm. it a flaw? Oh, is it a good thing? I don't know. But 
so I I have been reading about Bigfoot and stuff and they're not giving me crap over here it's kind of like you know you got to figure this out there's many you know I can I be honest I think it's all I think all the theories of where it comes from is a little bit of everything so yep. like well, and here's the thing maybe spirit's not going to give you that information straight up because they are fallen angels right or it could be that it's a little bit of everything so they can't mm -hmm. they can't yes. pinpoint it just mm -hmm. this you know so um i think that it's it's very fascinating to me and i i want to see one so bad you know how like people say i want to see a ghost I want to see an apparition, <laughs> and I'm over mm -hmm. here. Oh, I see that all the time. I want to see. A big, <laughs> I want to see a big foot so badly. So we were. Where were we driving the other day? And it was these huge. Oh, we were going up to Shippensburg. Um, and I'm like, look at these power lines, because I go right to that. I'm like, big mm -hmm. I want there to has been Bigfoot spotted in Waynesboro. Oh sure. yeah. <laughs> What? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Eric, yeah. talk to Eric and on Eric's page. Yeah. The, the gentleman we had on our very first live. Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> and here's the thing. There is the theory that they need power lines, but the stories that we heard, the guys were from Tennessee. They were from North Carolina. They're 40, 50 miles out in the remote, remote areas of these things. There's no, no power, lines. power lines. There's nothing around. And the one guy, Michael Cook, who's an authority, well, supposedly an authority on Bigfoot, he's fascinating to listen to. He had his first encounter, what, when he was 15, he skipped school and was fishing. And he had gone over this like little edgy area to get down to this river. And he was just fishing away. And all of a sudden he heard this massive noise come down the opposite bank. It rolled down the hill and landed it out in the creek. And it got up and it was this big brown furry creature. And, and he's kind of embarrassed. And yeah, he feels like it was embarrassed almost because then it let out like this howl, like it was like, oh, you know, that should never have happened. But he said it took like two leaps and it was back up this cliff going back up the hill. But it was letting out a howl. So maybe it was just saying, you know, it was mad or, you know, embarrassed or whatever. But he could, he said that was just unbelievable for him. Okay, here, I got more questions. <laughs> uh -huh. You guys in your power line theories and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, I remember when I was in eighth grade, we went on a, like a, it's an outdoor school type thing up at Marlow Ridge in Jefferson, uh -huh. Maryland. And you, you do the overnight hike and mm -hmm. you take a, they take a, um, oh, what's it called? A fluorescent tube light. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we walk, there's a trail that walks and you're right under the power lines. And it's like, at, you're literally standing at the foot of a power line. And you, they hold this light up and it lights. So there's energy coming from those power lines. Who yep. used to say that that's not something that they like recharge? Like that's what they per se eat. You know, I mean, obviously, I, I'm thinking they're right. you know, like killing but again, it's and theory, them. But again, it's, it's like the paranormal. There's no one expert. There's no one explanation for it all because no one's ever been able to capture one or bag one. You know, right. and even then you're only going to get the information of what you have. And, and they're trying to put the military man that saw them. They're trying to get things in place that they can't be hunted, that they can't harm them. Because, That's again... That was a question I had for you ladies. Yeah. What, you know, how do we sanction these mm -hmm. possibly extinct species? Possibly. Right. That is right. a. Yeah. Right. How do we sanction them? Because have we ever heard of them forcefully attacking anyone? Yes, mm -hmm. there are there are Native American stories of where the relationship went bad between like the villages and the large people and that they have they have taken women and children at that point in time. Nothing obviously recently, but you have the stories from like those in Russia. Remember that um, yeah. campsite where they yeah. couldn't explain how these people died? Oh. You know, so again, yeah, I, heard, I heard that story. I've heard that yeah, story right. before. The one, and in one of the theories is Bigfoot. And one of the theories was a Bigfoot that they they it got it got back. There was like, like nothing it, left. 
There was nothing. They well, found- and goofy things were like a tongue was ripped out. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. You know, like, the one person was a complete mangled mess. The other two had run and then they had frozen to death because they took off in, you know, in the middle of the night and they're nothing on but what they slept in. So they ended up freezing to death. But again, who's to say that they weren't provoking or doing something that agitated the animal? I mean, because again, and then the one guy, a picture. what about Michael? Was it Michael Cook, the one that, yeah, I know. There was one that Michael Cook, isn't he the one that said about the lights and his Indian friend took him out to see the lights every night? Or was that the military guy? What, I got them mixed up. I don't One remember. of them has a very good Native American friend and he took him out and it wasn't in Arizona. Anyway, so they're, the eye shine is what they're talking about yeah. too, because you know, like eye shine. And they explained how cat's eyes are reflective. It's not the animal putting out the shine. It's the reflection of the light that you saw. The amount of light, right. So they were talking about it, and um, I'm pretty sure it might have been the military guy. I got them mixed up. Yeah. Yeah. Because that they were, I was just so hung up on everything they were saying. It was fascinating. But he took him out, and the Indian tribe there has a relationship with these people. Like they don't like they, they don't communicate per se, but they make knocking noises to let them know that, you know, they mean them no harm. They started to let make knocking noises to let them know that, you know, they were the good people. They're not there to harm them. So on the edge of where this guy took him, you could see eye shine. And he said, you could see almost up to six pairs of lights. And it was he fascinating. He showed it. us a photo of it. And they went back for five nights and this happened. Now he said, now one night it might be, two, you know, four lights or, you know, six, it would alternate. But he, the Indian would make this knocking noise to let them know that, you know, they meant them no harm and they kept a distance. But he said he wanted to meet one so badly, he started, he got out of the car and was moving closer because his thought was, I'll get up to about 20 feet of these things and then I'll stop. Well, he said he got up to about 40 feet and the, it disappeared. So they didn't want the, they didn't want that interaction that close. Right. But the Indians had that relationship with them, which goes in line with a lot of the stories where they tell you, most Native American cultures have this in their culture. Yeah, absolutely. But they don't call them Bigfoot. No, um, no. Um, he said there's all different Cheyenne names. Cheyenne had 145 different, different names, names for Bigfoot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just in that one language. Mm-hmm. Because when I was studying with um, Native American Dalmat, they actually said that... This person said that it was believed in the Native American culture that they it was a sign of healing or a mm-hmm. sign of growth. You know, mm-hmm. they realized it as a um, positive thing and that they had healing mm-hmm. qualities. So they would like ask the, I can't remember what the name of it was, but right. they would ask them to like give them their energy or help with their energy to heal their crop mm-hmm. or to heal um, you know, the whatever. And it, it would- so here's the thought again, Sharon, that might support the idea of that they were fallen angels. Right, because of the healing abilities or the healing qualities. Mm-hmm. So why would we, but, but the thing is, I using the word falling angels, and I'm not saying that that's, this is just what I hear. They were what? just, put, they just aren't, are in the realm of they supposedly they were and i use the term loosely because again this is what a religion believes that they were they they went to work with god and god cast them out of heaven but But he didn't he good like if they can have these amazing can use why i don't want to look at it as a negative i think Mm -hmm. these these bigfoot sasquatch whatever Mm -hmm. eddies whatever you want to call them Mm-hmm. I feel like we could utilize, but that's the thing. I don't want to monopolize it either. Like, you know, oh, humans are far superior. Let's, you know. yeah, but I think that's why that military man is trying to get, and there is language out there that will cover this. He showed us the whole, the whole mm-hmm. bill proposed and everything of how yeah. they're trying to get a protection in place. Because again, you know, people go out with weapons, but they don't pull them and they don't draw them. Like you, there are many stories they told yeah. us of where the, they'll just, they will back off, you know, and again, they won't harm anybody but, because again, I think sometimes, you know, what are we doing to provoke it as humans? They're Because we the always territory. go to the negative right away. Exactly. Oh, we're going to die. That was my, exactly. You know, my 
exactly. They're not. I mean, yet. North Carolina guys, they were telling us that they do carry weapons in. It's not because of Bigfoot. It's no. because of the bear, the bear, and the mountain the lions, yeah. and everything else. Yeah. But Bigfoot's no different than those animals. We're coming into their territory. They're going to defend their territory. Right, which is why the boulders get thrown as a warning. Like, you know, things get thrown to keep you back. Because, again, they're protecting families, obviously. This is you know, so they're, they're, They have sightings of different sizes of these things. They had sightings of, like, three together going through. Well, there was the one. I don't remember who was telling us the story. But they were following the tracks. And the tracks took two different routes. Mm-hmm. So they know there was a smaller one with it because because and there the was track. a track hidden in, in the one track. Until they split off, then they noticed, knew that there were two. I want to see a baby Bigfoot. <laughs> I know, my baby is a little baby. <laughs> but is it, it's just fascinating. To, I mean, because we have millions and millions of acres out there. There's no way. You know, no. and these things have eluded humans for how long? <clears throat> So uh, that was that's another question I've been sitting here thinking. Okay, so we keep talking about North America and South America and the Amazon and stuff like oh, that. Everywhere. I know there's been Alaska has had many sightings. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What about like Australia and mm-hmm. oh, yeah. and, and things like that? Are they like all over the world? Been, is there is there is there any place where there hasn't been sightings? Not that. I- that I'm not that I know of. I think that I mean because again, and somebody asked that because they what did that man say when he didn't believe like him, he didn't know about Pangea and he's like no they couldn't have survived that long or something, but I felt like saying were you there? <laughs> yeah. I mean, who's to say they didn't? Right. I think. I, mean, I think he was a little confused. Yeah. Because they what they're saying to me anyhow is that Bigfoot has been around. Thousands since of the years. earth began yes and this guy's well how did they get to north america and i was like we were all connected at one point right all the land and masses. i don't think he was getting that right but, but then again but that's it, why they think that it, that it is everywhere i mean then again it could be if if we're going with the theory of frequency then they could mm-hmm. travel anywhere they want you got it yep so it doesn't matter if we're connected or not if they are able to jump frequencies or jump lines or jump whatever right. dimensions but they like you're 100 percent right because think about it sharon we have energy all around the world we have electricity all around the world now we can have any we the thing is people that have abilities um or learn how to utilize the abilities they have i'll say it that way mm-hmm. you can view anywhere or you can astral project anywhere with Mm -hmm. right the wave of frequencies Mm -hmm. so these beings these um these creatures i don't know how to say right like we don't have a term that's legit for them if they know how to do that then they're far evolved than we ever Mm -hmm. you know so uh fascinating isn't it yeah oh Steve just said, maybe it's not evolution. Maybe it's just deserving because humans destroy everything. So it's, you know, he's deep. So, yeah. you know, Steve gets deep. And Steve yeah. is what we would consider like Karen and Earth Angel. So he sees it as they're more deserving of being able to of being able to have those abilities of cloaking and riding the yeah. wave, the frequencies and things right. like that well right. the cloaking ability they've proven they can do that they can do it in a lab they can prove the cloaking ability for humans like not yeah. tried on humans but they can prove that cloaking ability now in a lab this so is the technology is there it, it is there so i just saw a tiktok that had bill clinton being interviewed by this late night show guy Okay. Mm -hmm. And the one of the people there asked Bill, do you believe in did you see that, Tracy? Uh (laughs) And and he said, I don't know about that, but what I do know is that Area 51 was is very well sanctioned and protected because they're finding cloaking. They're trying to figure out cloaking devices. He mm-hmm. said, look, that's the, yeah, that's the word he used was cloaking. Yes. 
and he, but then he kind of alluded for our ship our yeah. airplanes and whatnot yeah mm -hmm. and they've done that that's what the stealth mm -hmm. airplane was yeah it's hey. cloaked from radar different things like that it's i mean oh yeah i mean there look at the stealth bomber when that came yep. out many moons ago i remember going to an air show and my mom and I were getting off of the little bus that took you from the parking area over to the air show. And as we were getting off the bus, I was like, what is that roar? It was like, all of a sudden you heard this roar and it was literally right above your head. You yep. didn't hear it coming. Yep. You know, and yep. that's something it, that particular bomber is a, is a able to cloak <laughs> its radar signal so that it can't be detected. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But here's the crazy thing too. Think about Bigfoot. Like I, I like watching Expedition Bigfoot, and some of the things they've talked about, they have to address the cloaking, the materials, and the things. That's how I know that they have proof cloaking. Um, but think about it with the aliens and everything. Or aliens, as in you know, not little green men, but just anything that's foreign to our to our knowledge. To the human, yeah. To the human knowledge, because again, we're behind in technology as opposed to what the advanced oh, yeah. technologies are. Oh, yeah. So again, we're just brushing the surfaces of a lot of this stuff that you know someone on another planet or another you know pro this is all old to them like they've you know it's just everyday shit to them right. right so who's to say right and and like with spirit they can cloak earthbound spirit mm -hmm. they can cloak. Mm -hmm. and he ended the conversation with if we basically not these exact words but basically he said if you don't believe that there's life out in other solar systems mm -hmm. oh, yeah. okay just because i mean we are so behind in time so oh my gosh but here's the other thing i brought up to karen last night and i thought was interesting about time travel mm -hmm. because again your time travelers what if they're using that frequency what if they're using frequencies that they've been able to, to jump dimensions right how do one we of, one of the guys was talking about um Coral Castle in Florida. Look that up. Look that up. Look that up. Um, can you um, send me that information in our video? <laughs> but they used, go ahead, yeah, finish that. He, he, the guy who built it, built this Coral Castle by himself using tons of coral. Tons, tons. Like Stonehenge, like the pyramid technology. And he said that's how he did it was with pyramid technology. He's using like levitation, reverse magnetics to move these pieces of coral into place. Yep. What? It was, it's mind blowing. Oh my goodness. This mind thing is huge. Blowing. So he's mind obviously, he harnessed something to do this. And it is in Florida. It's, they call it the Stone Chain. You can visit Kent it. in Florida. Yeah. Yeah. It's in Homestead, Florida. I just looked it up. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah we're just. We are just literally touching the surface of, yeah. you know. Well, what see, that, that leads me to, you know, you said the pyramids. He used the, the technology that they used to do mm -hmm. the pyramids. That has always fascinated me. Always. And he said, they asked him how he did it. And he said, you're not ready to know. So who's to say he wasn't a time traveler bringing that information back with him? Oh, absolutely. So, <laughs> a, how do we know he wasn't a star seed mm -hmm. in that information you yep. know oh my gosh and here's the other thing I and I told Karen I said this is another thing that fascinates me about the whole thing we talk about power lines but that's man-made energy what happens with the ley lines mm. they're under Stonehenge they're under these places is there some is there a way to harness that energy from these lines yeah but we, we'll have to talk offline about that one, but I got a, I got a thing. But it, for those that are watching us live, this is how our conversations usually go when we're all together. Well, and, and that's what this morning we we were up like I don't know it was like six, <laughs> six or, or something, and we just started rambling about this, and we're like, we got to do this for our group because we have these fascinating conversations, and we go down these rabbit holes. But truly, people around us, they need to listen to some of this stuff. Because, again, what are their thoughts? You know, can they can they run with this? What bits of information well, do they want? I want to acknowledge that Hope Keithley has been the main watcher the whole time. 
there's been people popping in and out um, frequently, but Hope has been the one. And she said, I'm loving it. I feel like I'm part of the gang. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I wish that we could bring, you know, others on and yeah. have, have some of our, you know, followers join and us. And maybe we can do another things. live. Yeah, and, and I mean, we may do another live minute. and I could do it through StreamYard or whatever and have people, mm -hmm. you know, just join us. And you know that kind of thing, or we could do Zoom or whichever platform. Yeah. That yeah. Out. But um, she has really, you know, she's been popping in a few <laughs> comments here and there, and there's been others that have popped the one. Annette Reese popped the one, and there's been a few others I didn't actually see them. I, I looked, and there's, right. there's only been like one viewer the whole time. So. But again, yeah. it, you know, it's Father's Day. People have planned. You right. Know, you get right. That. And but you know, we just wanted are, to get it out there now and share with you guys. And while it's fresh, in, fresh our in our minds. Yeah. And right. why we had these tidbits, because we can always go down these rabbit holes then at a later time and bring in people. Because again, I, I, really I like how I like how we challenge each other. That's mm -hmm. one thing about the four of us that I love, because mm -hmm. You guys have your, you know, Karen's like Bigfoot. Yes, I got it. And Tracy's like getting into it. There's got to be logic behind it. And Sharon's like, wait a minute, spirits tell me I have no flipping idea. And I'm like, wait a minute, has anybody seen a baby Bigfoot? <laughs> so, I mean, we have the whole realm, you know, of our own skepticism yeah. within the four of us. But here's my question too, and it's just a thought that I'm I'm constantly sitting with, and I constant because I am I'm somebody who just constantly is on a quest for more, 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 and I really think the biggest thing with me is everything is interrelated in our world. Everything is interrelated: the spiritual world, the paranormal, our logical world, everything as we know it, our human existence. It's all interrelated. I don't think you can separate these things apart. You nope. can maybe separate them into subcultures to study, but I truly, truly believe the entire thing together is what creates this balance that we live on. I agree. So, so with us, with me feeling that we're here to love everything and everyone, is Bigfoot part of that? Because the Bigfoot creature, whatever, mm -hmm. wants us to acknowledge that's their environment. Stop mm -hmm. killing that environment. Mm -hmm. Is that the message from the, I'm getting chills. Is mm -hmm. that the message that we're supposed to get from that? Because we're all here to learn mm -hmm. and love. And see, and my, my biggest thing that I feel too is that purpose is we're here to help each other. I agree. Right. To me, that's is, my biggest thing. Is, Bigfoot helping, helping is Bigfoot helping humankind to stop killing off the rainforests and the, <laughs> and the, you know, the mountains and turning everything into man-made this and man-made that. Exactly. An effort to save us as a human race. Exactly. Greed's getting, greed's, greed is a very powerful. A very real thing. Real yeah. powerful horribleness and, and the thing is you talk about manifestation that's probably i bet you if you took a poll that's probably the biggest thing people manifest is is, is you know more oh, financial, absolutely more financial, Funny. More financial. i mean when i'm flipping through tiktoks or whatever mm -hmm. it's like oh learn how to manifest money for tomorrow you'll have a thousand dollars in your that's, mailbox that's what i was just gonna say and i'm gonna tell people that's not how manifesting works no no mm -hmm. what you you get just enough to be happy and to be right. plentiful, not to be a millionaire. That's right. not. Work. Well, it's funny because I had one TikTok come up and it was some kind of thing where you like, you, you click on the, they had all these pictures going up and you click on, take a screenshot and it'll mm -hmm. show you what, what, you know, legacy you're going to leave behind. And when I did that, it said, you're going to be the only millionaire in your, the first millionaire in your family. And I sat with that because as Sharon has taught me, you sit with it, mm -hmm. you know, kind of thing. So I sat with that and I'm thinking, I'm already a millionaire. I truly am. Not I can, in dollar I can time. you know, help people with their loved ones from the other side. Mm -hmm. I have friends that love me like family. Mm -hmm. I have family that loves me and mm -hmm. supports me. Um, I'm living my best life. 
I'm mm -hmm. a millionaire already. Right. That's people, how I judge wealth. Right. Mm -hmm. People take things literally like a millionaire. They think they that, think monetarily. That's not we need to change our our thought focus. And I'll tell you, I'm gonna be honest. I'll be honest, Abe here. I did not have any belief in Bigfoot at all. <laughs> Tracy C and I are over here going skeptic Jane. <laughs> Like we're um, over here, like, hey, we're a Susan. You know what I mean? Like we're so skeptic. Mm -hmm. But right? that's okay. But like that's I gotta finish. <laughs> then Karen and I had that experience at that, <laughs> that price. And I have been changed since that day. I cannot, cannot debunk it. Like, <laughs> It was communicating with the dogs. Remember the dogs that yes. were yes. communicating back to it. Then we find these odd trans like <laughs> formations. That was yeah. wild. Look, I got goose. So if we could just change our mindset, that's where I'm getting at. If we could just change our mindset to be open to possibility, it it really would make things. I think it would just make this world not be so negative and ugly. As humans, we default to the negative. We need to change it to the gratefulness of what we have. Right. And wouldn't that just little shift make a huge ripple on our frequency levels? Just one yeah. person, then two people, then three, and so on. You know, I was so mm -hmm. close to it by it because I was like, no, Bigfoot's a tulpa. It's a manifestation of energy. It's a negative thing. I'm, I don't even want to, you know, and now like, I need to see this thing. <laughs> I, it's not a need to see it. It's, it, but I do. I'm not going mm -hmm. to lie. I need to yeah. see it. And that's okay. About it, you know. But, and it was funny, I thought at this conference that nobody, nobody that we listened to had had a, what I would call a bad experience with Bigfoot. They'd had rocks thrown. Mm -hmm. um, but not, not where he was coming after them to kill him. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't, it was, they were defending their territory. Right. Just to back them up. They That's had more problems with bear. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Literally. With the bear. Than they did with Bigfoot. But that's what I was saying. Like, yeah, you guys said there's some counts that they're saying might be a Bigfoot, but we don't have proof that it actually was. Why couldn't that, that whole tr thing in Russia be, you know, a lichen or, you know, which is a werewolf, you know, mm -hmm. or what could be something else. Well, look that, at the thing they just yeah. caught on TikTok memory. And it, it's been all over the Facebook and everywhere is the thing that outside the Cincinnati Zoo that looks like a dog upright walking on two legs. Mm -hmm. So again, how do you know it's not something like that? Because again, here's the absolute craziness. So if we do operate on frequencies, these things are interdimensional. What else is popping in our, our frequencies? We'll never know. It's endless. It's mm -hmm. so like when we go to investigations and stuff or assessments, you know, I just had one on Friday. That's why I couldn't be with you guys. Totally. It, it's like, wow. Okay. This is different. Mm -hmm. you know, like this is a different feel. We don't know everything. Nobody could mm -hmm. ever know everything. Well, I mean, yeah. even, I mean, I'll admit, you know, I, I will go places and it's like, because you feel energy, we're mediums, we're going to feel the energy. Can but you what, what boggles my mind is when I feel an energy, but I can't identify it. Mm -hmm. So is that a ripple in the frequency? I or is that know. Am I not supposed to? Is it something that I'm not capable of communicating with? I, or is it just something that I'm supposed to feel and not see? I'm a control person. Well, we all know that. I have a hard time relinquishing control. That's one of my pet things or whatever. But toxic traits or whatever they call them. But um, I have that problem too, Tracy. If I can't, like, I almost like, I got to understand this. But like Tracy B saying, maybe we're just not supposed to. That's not for us. Right. And, you know... Well, and I'm a firm believer, and I've said this before, we have universal truths in all of us. I really believe every human being is born with that universal soul. Mm -hmm. Whether we 
can reach in deep enough to access that is again, your own personal journey. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think as mediums and as psychics, I think we're tapping into more of that universal truth. Yeah. I think we're pulling more information, which allows us to expand our minds to be able to understand more sometimes. And not that other people can't do it because I do think other people, like even these guys that research Bigfoot and stuff like that, I think, you know, there's a drive there for that, for that information. Yes. Mm -hmm. Sorry, wow. I have to click off. I'm going to help somebody put up a trampoline. <laughs> <laughs> and I gotta go vacuum my pool. And we yeah. gotta drive home. <laughs> this is so this great. Is fascinating. This is amazing. I can't wait to get some feedback. Obviously, people are busy today. We yeah. need that. Yeah. We just yeah. wanted to get together and share it with you know all of our followers or whatever. Mm -hmm. But feel free to comment. Obviously, the comments are gonna be live or are not gonna be live. But if you right. if you watch the rerun. Let us know what you guys think. We do read those comments. So Trace, I think you should put this one on our YouTube yes. channel. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Because okay. this one I definitely think will cause some people to stop and think. Right. And if anything, if we can just broaden that horizon and come out of that box a little bit, we need logical right. people to help keep us grounded and help keep basics, but we also need our free thinkers. Because again, yeah, the, I think the theories, the, just the theories that the four of us have come up with, you know, asking the Correct. questions and everything. There's so many more questions and so many mm -hmm. more theories out there. Mm -hmm. um, it would be interesting to see those comments as well about mm -hmm. what others feel like everything that we've spoken about today, what others mm -hmm. feel about that. Right. So right. I will post this out to uh, YouTube as well. Yeah. yeah. So exciting. Yeah. Well, yeah. thank you. And you guys be safe driving. Yes, home. you guys have a safe trip home. <laughs> 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 All right. Everybody Bye. enjoy your day. Talk to you later. Okay. See ya. Bye. 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 Bye.